Okay. So screen is visible, right? Guys, my screen is visible, right? Okay. So as we already, you know, added the Ansible user and we have added the password also. And I have showed you, right? So suppose if we go to slash etc slash Ansible, there is a file called host. It's the inventory file. So I will open this sudo vi that host file. When you press enter, here you can list out your server detail, maybe remote server detail. For an example, I will go to the insert mode. Say, suppose I'm adding uh, the server name is production or demo, anything you can add it. And the IP address of your machine, you can add it. I will take my slave machine because this is where I'm going to communicate. So I will add the slave IP address here. And let me save this file. Right. I have saved this file in order to cross verify one second and maybe I will open that host file. Is that added? Yes, it got added, right? Then file. It got added. So we have a one more file which is called ansible.cfg which is a configuration file. Ansible configuration file. So I will open this particular file. You will see what is available. Ansible.cfg. So when you press enter, this is the configuration file for Ansible. So this is where generally Ansible default it has given where your host file got located. I said right in Ansible we have a many modules. Ansible con consists of a many module a predefined script that we can use it, right? So that and all available in this particular directory. So if you want to change this directory, you can be able to change it or otherwise you can go with the default directory. So slash etc slash ansible slash words is the default directory for your inventory file. Whereas slash user share slash underscore my underscore modules. This is where you, are, you can find all the module and they have given module utility like that, right? But can you see one word here, fork? What is fork? Can anyone tell me what is fork in Ansible? It is important entry question. Fork in Ansible. to copy other repository. Uh, yeah, a fork that we have discussed in your uh, GitHub, right? Forking means we already have some repository in one GitHub. Suppose if you want to get that copy from one repository to another repository, it is called forking in GitHub. But in, in Ansible, forking is different. Forking means, suppose doing the concurrent operation or parallel ex execution, Say, suppose I have an Ansible server, master server that is connected with the multiple slave machine. Now, how many concurrent operation, parallel execution you can do? Suppose if you want to install one software, what Ansible will do? It will parallelly execute on five machine. Fork equal to five means in five machine, you can see like a parallel execution, a parallel process that will happen. Once it is completed, then it will pick another five machine where the parallel execution will happen and so on. So fork means executing some task in the server, but how many parallel process or how many parallel connection the Ansible uh, will use to, to manage and configure multiple hosts simultaneously. That's nothing but your forking. So here the default port is five. It means that five 
a parallel execution we can do at a time. What is it? Suppose if you configure 50 server, 50 server with your Ansible master, then first five server it will pick where the parallel execution will happen. Next time it will pick another five and then it will pipe like that. If you want to change the parallel execution or concurrent operation, you can change it here. That is called a POPs. Guys, am I clear with the poke? Fork means parallel execution or concurrent operation that you are going to perform simultaneously. And we have a one more term which is called which is called pole interval. Pole interval which is equal to 15 seconds. It is not a minute. It is a second. Pole interval, 15 seconds. What is pole interval? The time period where the execution happens. Time period where the execution will happen. Uh, did you remember in uh, your GitHub, we have a polling, poll git. What is poll git will do? Uh, what poll interval will do? Poll git. Your Jenkins, suppose if we mention two minutes, what Jenkins will do? It will uh, go after two minutes to your GitHub. It will check whether any changes happened on the GitHub. Again, after two minutes, periodically it will go ahead and it will check is there any changes on the GitHub. That is called a poll git. The same way in poll interval, in real time, you know, maybe there will be a long running task and all available. Suppose you have written some complex script. Maybe the slave machine, it will take a much time to execute. That is called long running task. This Ansible, it will go ahead and it will check Ansible servers or maybe a remote server for every 15 seconds. Suppose it is checking one task on one remote machine. If it is not completed, right, or it will wait for, a, it will go ahead and it will do the task on another server. It will come back after 15 seconds, it will check whether my process completed or not. So every 15 seconds once, it will go ahead and it will check whether given task is completed or not. So I can say it is a time interval uh, between your status check for your long running task. Suppose when Ansible runs a task that takes a long time to complete, right? So it can execute the task asynchronously. So this means that Ansible uh, will submit the task and it will continue with the other task without you know waiting for the long running task to finish. After 15 seconds, it will come here and it will check whether it has been completed. Remember, it is called as asynchronous execution. Basically, whenever if a task, it's a long running task, it will assign the task and it will go with the other task and it will complete the particular part or otherwise. It will assign it and it will come back here after 15 seconds to check whether it has completed or not. That is called poll interval. Kind of a status check for every 15 seconds, whether my task is completed or not, which is done by your Ansible, which is called poll interval. Are you clear with what is poll interval and what is a fork? Fork is parallel execution. Poll interval means the interval or the 15 second, a polling period it is taking to check whether the task is completed or not. Yes, finish. Like interval timeout in ELB. Don't compare with ELB. Better you can compare with a Git poll. In Jenkins, I, have, I taught Git poll. So where we have given the cron pattern, like H by two star, star, star. So what generally will happen? Jenkins will go ahead and it will see, is there any changes on the GitHub, right? The same way, here also, your Ansible is checking 
whether the particular task is completed or not, not frequently, but periodically. Any question on this case? What is spoke and what is uh, this uh, pole interval? Uh, no, Vinish. Okay. So, I am on my master machine. Suppose I want to communicate with a slave, I already mentioned, we should have the SSH connectivity. So, I have clearly given the notes also here. So, if you want to make a master-slave communication, first of all, we have to install the master. We have already installed a master in our machine. Ansible in our machine, and we have added the Ansible also. User add Ansible and the password also we have added. Now, suppose I want to give the pseudo permission, pseudo permission to my Ansible server. How can I give the pseudo permission to the Ansible server? Can anyone tell me how to give the pseudo privileges to my Ansible server? Uh, we have to give the command like uh, su. Uh... Which file how to edit in order to give the pseudo privileges? What is the file name that we have to edit? Exactly. Vi sudo. So I will type sudo bi sudo sudo bi sudo press enter so in this particular file we have to add the privileges to your ansible like sudo privileges to the ansible what i will do I will just type Ansible space and just to copy this one. Copy this one and paste it in. All equal to all, no password all. So it means that we are giving a permission, pseudo permission, pseudo privileges to your Ansible user. So let me save this file. Center. Once you save, now I will log into my Ansible, SEO space, iPhone Ansible. Right? It is asking the password. Done. Now I am the Ansible user. So I will check who am I? I am the Ansible user now. So what I have done? I just created one Ansible user and I have given the password and I have given the pseudo privileges because this master is going to configure everything on the slave machine. Then it records some pseudo privileges. I have added the pseudo privileges in the BI pseudo file. Whatever that I have done, guys, here, same thing I have to perform on the slave machine also. I have to add the same Ansible user and I have to add the password and giving the permission. So let me go to my EC2 console. And this slave machine I'm going to connect. Click on connect. And copy this. And I will open one more terminal. Simply CD downloads. And paste this path. 
grievous right so this is my slave machine and slave machine also i'm going to add the ansible user how can i add sudo remember guys in slave machine you no need to install the ansible you just add the username and password that's enough as you remember ansible is working with which mechanism whether it's a push based mechanism or pull based mechanism is a push push based or pull based is it an agentless software or agent software it is agentless software and it is push based mechanism so only you have the software on the master not record on the slave you can add the user here sudo user add ansible sudo user add ansible press enter the same way you can give the password also sudo password ansible type some password Done, and I will edit that particular file. Sudo ba sudo. Press enter. Ansible. Just to copy this. and paste it save this particular file it's completed any question so far okay once master slave we have completed what is the next step guys can you compare with the jenkins we have created the users on both the machine in ansible machine also in the slave machine and password also we said sudo privileges also we have given what is the next step What is the next step? How to make the SSH connectivity from master to slave? IP. I mean, IP means. ip address okay ip address what should i do you with help of ip address i have to generate the token right yes or no i have to generate the key a public key first of all i have to generate the public key on the master machine this public key we have to copy to my slave machine that's the next step now how to generate the ssh key can anyone remember how to generate the ssh key ssh ipen key gen right you are correct so on the master machine i have to generate so which one is my master machine so master machine ip address is 172 which is 172 so what is 
go here and i will generate the ssh key with help of ssh iphone key gen i will use it ssh iphone key gen we have to use so when you press enter it will ask you what is the default file path so no issues press enter and passphrase extra password i don't want enter the same password again press enter that's it it will generate a key for you so let me clear the screen so type ls space iphone al can you see one file got generated which is called ssh key we have generated let me go to cd dot dot ssh press enter and ls space iphon al we have a key here can you see here we have a public key and also we have a private key we have both we have a public key and we have a private key now i have to copy this a public key from my master machine to slave machine how can i copy so for that you have to use a command you have to use a command which is ssh iphone copy iphone id space iphone i the username which is answerable is the username at the rate of the ip address of your slave node what is the ip address of slave node so which is this one let me take this one and paste it here ssh iphone copy iphone id space iphone i ansible at the rate of this particular public ip address you have to give it when you press enter it is trying to connect my slave machine yes permission denied and can anyone tell me why i'm seeing the permission denied might be we have to allow it in the security yes in the slave machine in default the password authentication it got disabled yes or no yes yes how to enable can anyone remember how to enable enable password authentication how to mark it as yes how to enable yes uh, in which file it is available aman which file i have to go and where i need to uncomment what is the file path on the slave machine it's uh, ssh ssh underscore config okay see let me write cd slash etc if you type ls space iphone al there is a file called ssh right i will go here cd ssh ls space iphone al and we have a file called ssh underscore config so it's a file right it's a file so i will open sudo bi ssh d underscore config press enter and if you come below here you can see password authentication is no so i can make and comment and this is i'm going to comment this
screen tag screen lag guys is it my screen is lagging no dinesh whether you can able to see my screen right yes yes so i will save this particular file right now how to restart your sssd guys how to restart how we have to restart how can i restart so in order to restart this one we can write a sudo service sssd restart right so now let me clear the screen and i will go here the another one i will try to connect this one so this will ask you the password first time now i am i've connected to my now i have copied my ip address or maybe a public key from the master to slave machine this is how we can able to do the ssh connectivity guys we have to allow the passwordless authentication at right, now i will try to connect this one how to connect my slave server which command you have to use to connect to your slave server can anyone which command you will use it to log in to your slave machine from the master machine simply you can use ssh space and the and ip sibyl address at the rate of that public ip address that public ip address of your slave node public ip address of slave node that's it present now can you see i have successfully logged into my a slave node which is 218 right which is 218 so i can able to log in from my master to slave by following the same steps that we have followed for jenkins same steps you have followed okay sorry clear for jenkins whatever the steps that we have followed right the same step you can follow it on ansible also once you have installed the ansible on your master machine you just add the ansible. this is the step guys if you want the step it is clearly given in the document itself here add the ansible user on master machine also in the slave machine create the password on the master machine on the also slave machine give the sudo privileges on the master and also slave once it is completed you can log in to your master node as a ansible user generate the ssh key copy the ssh key from the master to slave that's it you can able to connect from your master to slave so am i clear guys yes or no do you want me to repeat or refine 
everyone monica sarandraj vignesh yuvraj do you want me to repeat or fine fine right suppose is yes, do you know what is ad hoc ad hoc uh, anyway let me clear this let me exit this also i will exit this and i am now on my master node there is a ad hoc command guys on ansible suppose if i write ansible space hyphen m M means a module actually. So we have one module in Ansible which is called a ping module. Now I am going to write a production here. Production. So it means that I am trying to ping this production. Whether I can able to, whether I can able to ping it or not. So this is one one of the ad hoc command. Using this ad hoc command, I am going to use one module called ping module. What the this ping module will do? Whether I can able to access this production, I'm going to check it. So when you press enter, and I'm seeing right success, I see success. It means that this is my slave private IP address. So it is saying a yes, success. I can able to ping my slave machine. So if you are seeing, if it is not success, you can see in the red color. so whether i can able to ping it or not i can able to ping it so using this particular command ansible space hyphen m a ping command ping is the module name did you remember i said in uh, in your ansible we have more than 3000 modules are available more than 3000 modules are available so i'm just checking whether i can able to ping my slave node yes i can able to ping my slave node or maybe i can able to ping my production production means Did you remember? I have I have inserted into my uh, inventory file, right? Name is production. Any name you can give it. So using this particular command, we can check whether I can able to ping the production. I can able to ping the production. Are you clear with this command? Ansible space hyphen m. A ping is the module name, and production is the. Inventory file where I want to enter the number of servers. Right, father, I have given the name, which is called production. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, Saman. Instead of production, you can if you know IP address, you remember, you can directly give the IP address. In the production real time, we will give private IP address. If you want, you can give it also. But I have given the name inside the inventory file. That's the reason I have given the name. Suppose under this production, if you have a hundred server IP address, this Ansible it will interact with all the hundred server, whether it is success or not, it will return. Suppose. If you want to understand uptime of your production, what is the uptime? If you want to check for that, you can write the command ansible space hyphen m. There is a module called command module. There is a module called command module, and here you can use one flag called hyphen a uptime. Which one? Production. 
if you write like this and you press enter what happened here this it will give you what is the uptime so uptime is something it is giving like 43521 it got up so your production when it was up when it has been started so those information if you want to get it you can go with the this particular command ansible space hyphen m module name is command and you have to use the plug called hyphen a and the production up time you have to give it so in the inter people might ask you what are the files that are available on your slave machine what are the different files are available on your remote machine so then you can use ansible space hyphen m and the module is command space hyphen a here you have to mention df df space hyphen h and type production so you will get to know that what are the file system are available so when you press enter so these are the different file system are available or mounted on your slave node all this file information you can find it with help of this particular ad hoc command so ad hoc command means at a time we can able to execute only one one task we can able to execute that is called ad hoc command so using this ad hoc command only one task we can able to execute only one command we can write it and when you press enter it will give you some answer right we cannot store it this and all so that is called ad hoc command in ansible we have a mini ad hoc command suppose if you want to perform any one line operation or one task or in that case you can go for this particular command so this is very very important command and in the inter people might ask you this command also they will ask you how can i understand different file system on the slave node you just tell them ansible space hyphen m the module name is command space hyphen a is the plug df space hyphen h and we have to give the production okay sorry clear guys yes please suppose i want to install some software guys on my slave node i want to install my software on a slave node how can i install my software on slave node i am in master machine i am in master machine i want to install uh, some software on slave node say i want to install apache server http server so for that you can use the adapt command ansible space ipon yum space yum space yum is the module name yum is the module name ipon a space here you have to mention say uh, i want to install i want to install the software is httpd software and you can provide state should be a present state should be present and where i am going to install i am going to install on production server uh, it is that on my slave nodes suppose if you configure forty server with the production all this server this particular apache server will be installed httpd server so i am pressing enter so we'll wait so we got the failed response why we got the failed response instead of server you need to be a root to perform this command okay so i am the ansible user right even though i have given the pseudo privileges 
I need to be a root to perform this because it is confused whether I am the root user or the ansible user. Okay, no issues. So what I will do at the end, I will use iPhone 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 become. IPhone, IPhone become becomes a root user or pseudo user. Now let me press enter. Yes. So it is in green color and it indicates my software installed on my slave machine. Let me check this one. I can go to another node here. So I will check my slave node as the HTTP server or not. So better I will go to the ans as a ansible user. Okay, right. I am the answerable user. Now I let me check sudo system ctl space status http d. Present. Can you see here the Apache server? It is available, but it is inactive. That's fine, but it is available. Why it is inactive? Because I didn't start it. That's the reason it is inactive. But the Apache HTTP server is available. Guys, you no need to come here. From the master machine itself, you can check it. Right? So can I, you can log in as, you know, right how to log in. So you can log in with help of which command? Which command you have to use it to log in? To your slave? SSH, space, Ansible at the rate of you have to give the slave node IP address. That is the slave node. This is slave node IP address. I can paste it. Press enter. Now let me check on the slave node. Check the status. Sudo system CTL status http d when you press enter can you see here here it is saying your server is available so this is how you know you can configure or you can install some software into your slave machine from the your master machine so let me exit are you clear guys so far Guys, am I clear? I'm asking. If you are not understood, just tell me. Okay. In interview, people might ask you, there is a question called what is item potence? Can you hear this word, item potent or item potence? What is item potence? What is item potence? Hmm? Item potent means cannot change. Yes, it will avoid to replace again. Correct. Once the state is defined, we cannot change. It means that suppose suppose you are installing your HTTP service 
on your slave load on slave ansible you are trying to install it is installed successfully right it is installed successfully now once again if you are trying to install same http service on the slave node on the slave ansible whether it will install or not no it will not override or it will not be duplicate it will not allow you to install that's the reason we are writing state equal to present right state equal to present so if you try to install once again same service on the slave node it won't override or duplicate guys that is called idem potent ansible as the feature called idem potent idem potent means once it is installed we cannot override or we cannot duplicate if you want you can uninstall them and then you can install it that is the property of idem potent in ansible we have this particular property guys are you clear what is idem potent interview question guys what is idem potent people will ask you that time you have to tell like this suppose if your software or some service is running on your slave node but if you try to install once again one more service of with the same maybe a software in that case your server build won't allow that is called idem potent right in the same way we have a one more word called verbose verbose in ansible what is this verbose verbose generally used for troubleshooting to troubleshoot so when you use this space hyphen v v v command it is called verbose so verbose basically will generate some logs using this log we can troubleshoot your slave node why it got happened all those thing we can troubleshoot suppose i will show you i will clear this i am trying to write ansible ansible space hyphen m m is the module name m is the module name hyphen a is the flag where i am writing name is equal to httpd space state is equal to say present state is present space i am giving production production space space i need to give hyphen hyphen become when you press enter see it is giving http server is already installed what is it saying http server is already installed it is not installing once again it is saying already ansible server it is available that is called your idem potence but let me add hyphen v v v verbose verbose so when you press enter now can you see here it is generating something in the blue color so the verbose generally refers you know it is related what kind of logs using that you can able to easily troubleshoot in the real time suppose if you are facing any problem you can check it actually so see it is going to the configuration file and it is checking whether i have a python versions and all and it is skipping right a call back the reason because 
we already have a, this call back and all that's the reason it is skipping everything so each and every operation you know whatever that that has happened like a kind of a locks you can find it on this particular verbose so verbose space hyphen bb three times you have to use it are you clear guys what is verbose and what is your item potents no i mean verbos never install the http again verbos just to just print the you know locks thereby we can troubleshoot suppose if you are finding any bugs with your ansible server or any problem you struck somewhere why struck those information if you want to gather you can go for verbos right guys uh, i will stop it here so playbook i will cover tomorrow playbook i will start tomorrow what is the syntax of playbook how to write the simple playbook and complex playbook and all i will teach you tomorrow as of now just install the ansible server make the master slave configuration the one more thing use some ansible ad hoc command so tomorrow i will teach you the playbook what is the difference between playbook and ad hoc command i will teach you tomorrow fine so any question okay then we'll see tomorrow thank you guys bye